hostiles. 12 o'clock is six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe, or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. Arthur C. Clarke. Even with this man's incredible imagination and intellect, he did not consider there may be a third possibility. Perhaps we are not alone on our own planet. It's a type of hubris and blindness that comes from science having been turned into a religion, the religion of accepted science. You're not allowed to ask questions anymore. You're not allowed to go against the accepted theology of what science is. Unfortunately, Antarctica has been one of those casualties. Only those who can see the invisible can do the impossible. And there is something that has been reported recently that has been invisible to a lot of people that explains a great deal about Antarctica and why we probably shouldn't be believing the official narrative. The Darwin Arch collapsed in the Galapagos Islands. Now, this was a very natural occurrence. The continual pressure of the salt water and the wind eventually wore away the rock to the point where it couldn't support the arch anymore. Very simple. But if seawater and wind in a somewhat temperate environment can do this to rock, how could there be anything visible on the surface of Antarctica, other than a vast, wind-blasted hellscape of ice. There are areas that are like that, but there are also areas of Antarctica that are inexplicable. And we've shown this over and over again. How could structures casting a shadow like this exist if what accepted science was telling us was true. They wouldn't. It would be impossible for them to withstand 
that type of pressure. The types of temperatures they're talking about in Antarctica turn ice into something as hard as steel. And with the winds blowing at well over 100 knots, someplace way more, it would have cut these structures down long ago, based on their statements that Antarctica has been this way for millennia. But yet, their own satellite imagery shows us stuff like this. It also shows us something very, very odd right here. It shows some type of a structure that has a moat or a wall built around it. You can see a very dark structure right here, but what looks like very much to be a constructed circular moat or wall around some type of a building, some type of an artificial structure, which would make sense. We have built buildings all along the coasts of every continent, resorts that go hundreds of feet in the air, and they can withstand the salt water and the spray and the, the wind, and they can withstand hurricanes. Why? Because they're artificial construction. They've been designed to do that. And we see evidence of this in Antarctica. And a bigger argument about this is, I really think they know this. And they're just keeping it hidden. Why? I'm not sure. Because not all of Antarctica can be seen in this level of detail. Only certain areas can. So you'd have to ask yourself, how do they make the decisions? What areas get high-res imagery and what areas don't? Well, personally, I believe they find things and then they go back and they image them in even more high-res and I can prove this. Right next to this is an area where we discovered what looks like a moai. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the video I did recently talking about the large moai head that we discovered. Now, here's the kicker on this. Here's how you can show that they know about this. This is an imagery layer from February of 2012. Now, as you can see, it's very dark. It's very hard to see, but you can make out the features a little bit. Now, you would ask yourself one question. Okay, so they were high-resing an image area for whatever reason. Why would they go back eight months later and do it again? It's not like these satellites can just turn on a dime and go back and just take pictures anywhere they want to. With all of the areas of Antarctica that are not imaged in high res, why would they take multiple images of one area only months apart? See, this is February 2012. This is something you can do with Google Earth Pro. You can go back through historical imagery, pictures that they've taken before. This was what I was talking about with that boat in the Caribbean, or what they were calling a boat in the Caribbean. That was actually a Tic Tac craft. People were asking, well, maybe they just updated the imagery. Why would you update a historical page? I wasn't saying that it wasn't there now. What I was saying was that the old imagery was gone, and they changed it. Now, this is February 2012, and there's all sorts of strange stuff, if you zoom in here, behind it that looks really, really suspicious for being, quote-unquote, just wind, ice, rock, and snow, penguins, and seals. Very, very odd, but they went back. They went back in October of that year, and they re-imaged the area when the light was better and found the same image. 
Now, how could it be just a shadow? How could it be just a pareidolia? Imagine going out one day and looking up at the sky and seeing an image of a dog in the clouds and then going out the very next day to the very same spot or even a month later or two months or five months later and seeing the exact same image of the dog at the exact same point in the sky that you saw it before. That would be ridiculous. You could never allege that something like that could happen and have it be just pareidolia. So once again, this is the October 2012 layer. This is the February 2012 layer. The imagery is just a little bit off, but that has to do with just the angle of the satellite and what time of day it was. It shows virtually the exact same thing. We can show another example of this. Some might say, okay, well, that's just one anomaly. We covered this, and I made the allegation that this was some type of an SR-71 prototype that was lost on the surface of Antarctica. And some people said, oh, Maquis, that's crazy. Well, look in the upper left here. This is 11, 2011. This is also 11, 2011. The same area. Now, why are they high-res imaging one area of Antarctica twice in the same month? It used to actually show the, the day. And if I remember the original video that I did here, they were only two, like, two or three days apart. This image and this image. This image and this image. Clearly, they sent the satellites back to get a clearer image. Now, some are asking the question, okay, well, they kind of look that way, but how big are they? I mean, are they close to the size of a SR-71 prototype? Well, let's measure. From the nose to the back is about, about 94 feet roughly. Now, how big is an SR-71 Blackbird? 107 feet long. So that's ballpark. That's pretty darn close. And that Moai statue? This is El Gigante from the Easter Islands. About 72 feet tall. If we go back to Antarctica, we can measure there too and see that what we're looking at is almost exactly the same size. Most of the Moai, by the way, are buried. And all that you see is the head. You don't see the rest of the body. Now, this image has the statue at about, this one's a little bigger, about 114 feet, but generally in the same region. One final example of this. A long time ago, we found what I alleged was what looked like an elasmosaur. It's an old dinosaur. Long neck, kind of a wide body with flippers, that perhaps what we were looking at here was some type of a, of a butchering site because we saw all the red, and people thought that was crazy. Well, when we measure what we're looking at here in feet, Let's do paths so we can get it around the uh, around the curve. About thirty-five feet. 
How big is an elasmosaur? Elasmosaurus, measuring 10.3 meters, 34 feet long. So we have three different locations where we can show things that look like things that we already know about. The areas are being imaged in high res. Why? We don't know. They're being imaged in high res in multiple months, very close to each other. Why? I think we can probably make the leap that whoever is in charge of the satellite saw what we're seeing and they wanted to get better pictures. This was also another location where we talked about the pyramid that we found. Once again, if it's just ice-blasted hellscape, the ability of the ice to destroy things and cut things down, pardon me, cut things down, is very well documented. Anyone who lives in the north knows what I'm talking about. How could you have such well-defined edges and shadows and heat being generated. On the right is a thermal image of the image on the left. How could you have these perfectly constructed doorways? This is another video. This is from March of last year. And to give you an idea how big this doorway is, the size of my cursor right here would be the size of a full-size truck. That's how big this doorway is. We have doorways. We have pyramids. We have evidence of large dinosaurs on the surface. We have buildings sticking up, casting huge shadows that should not be there. Ancient statues that we can find other places on the planet. It's pretty clear. At least to me, it's clear that what we're seeing in Antarctica is evidence that if there's not a civilization down there now, there was at one time. And I'll go back to this location one more time because sometimes things show up and sometimes they don't in certain years. And sometimes the imagery is off just a little bit. But this particular image shows just exactly how tall this structure is. There's no way, there's absolutely no way that something like this could exist in such a perfect shape. And you can see it from the shadow. If it were not constructed to do so, a naturally occurring rock would have been destroyed, just like the Darwin Arch, long time ago, though. And when you go back through the historical imagery and you see what's out there, it appears over and over again that there is something out there, something down there, that could rewrite history. And I guess I'll leave it here if anyone has a good explanation for what this wall or moat is, I would love to hear it. God bless, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can 
take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off world, sir? Bye. Uh -huh.